Crystal Palace's game-changing winger Wilfred Zahar suffered a knee injury in the first game of the season and it's been downhill for the Eagles ever since. As we saw a couple of weeks ago, some Palace fans have gone to extreme lengths to will his return to fitness. But now settled back at his boyhood club after his ill-fated move to Manchester United, I caught up with him to find out just what makes him tick. You're just too good to be true. Zaha, mesmeric, a twist and turns. It's that war pace. Taunting, teasing. Lovely bit of skill from Zaha. Zaha, Zaha. gets a shot away! This man is an explosive form. And let's go right back to when you arrived in this country as a four-year-old from the Ivory Coast. Do you have any memories of starting school in this country? Yeah, I do. Obviously, I couldn't speak any English at all. So you were speaking French at that point? Uh, yeah. If you did French GCSE tomorrow, how would that um, go? I doubt <laughs> that would be any good, to be honest. I can speak it, but I doubt French GCSE would be any good. The Ivory Coast of Croydon. Do you remember when you first started playing football? I loved playing football. I used to go to the park with my brothers all the time. And obviously, I've got five brothers, so literally, we'd get there, we wouldn't even have to wait anyone to make teams. <laughs> so we'd play amongst each other. We used to do that all the time, so that's how I got my love for football. Did you support Crystal Palace at this point? Yeah, because I was local. Like, it was crazy because before they scouted me, I had a house that was a minute away from the stadium. In my house, we all used to see the lights and think, what is going on in there? Being scouted for Palace, I was thinking this is a big opportunity, so I just grabbed it with both hands. So then you started playing for the first team at a very young age. Do you remember your debut? The person who gave me my debut was Paul Hart. And he was basically, go out there and enjoy yourself. So as I'm about to come on, I had the biggest smile on my face. Just, I wasn't even nervous. I was just thinking I'm actually gonna get on there and and then finally play. When did you first know that Manchester United were interested? I think when we played Man United in the Cup, that day was just such a big day for us because everyone was just pulling in the right direction and we actually managed to beat Man United away. <laughs> so from there, obviously, my agent spoke to me that, yeah, Man United might be interested. I was just thinking, I hope this is true. Mm -hmm. That's everything I've worked for. Then after I heard Sir Alex Ferguson say, I'm still too young, I thought, oh, all right, no problem. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Eventually, it did come true. Yeah. And you made that, that big move. Yeah, it was crazy when, like, I remember the conversation I actually had with him. And I remember Sir Bobby Charon was sat there as well. I was just thinking, am I actually in this room with Sir Alex Ferguson and Sir Bobby Charon? It was just crazy. But hearing him say he wants me at Manchester United, and I've seen him on the TV for years. Your whole life. <laughs> exactly. It's, I was just thinking, I just thank God, literally. Who were the players that you know, reached out a little bit to you and gave you a bit of guidance? My locker was actually next to Gixby's. So when I sat down and saw him, I thought, wow. But yeah, him, he spoke to me quite a bit. Rio spoke to me quite a bit. Nani, I was friends with Kagawa. I was actually friends with everyone. everyone made me very welcome. And the next step up is obviously getting yourself into that first team or match yeah. day squad. And it didn't come easily, did it? No, it didn't. When I went there, it was going through a transition period. So opportunities didn't come as easy because obviously mm. the manager's under pressure, the club's under pressure, they've got to do what they need to do to win. I just understood. I'll just train. If my opportunity comes, it comes. And when I did go alone, I thought, you know what? As big as Man United is, if I'm not going to get a chance to play here, I need to go somewhere where I will play. And Wilfred Zaha, such a popular figure in his first spell. He's back in Palace colours in the top flight. When you came back to Crystal Palace, did you yeah. feel, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm home? Exactly. Like, the fans greeted me like I didn't even leave at all, like the love was there instantly. How important is that to you, feeling loved and It's wanted? massive, I'm a confidence player. So when my confidence is high, I, I, I'm able to do things that I didn't even think I could do. So having the fans even sing, he's just too good for you, stuff like that, it's just like, these people proper love me. Went by Delaney, and it drops to Zaha! And Crystal Palace have done it! Wilfred Zaha has surely got their first point of the season. Do you think when you look at the managers, and you've had a few of them, 
yeah. at Crystal Palace. Yeah. The ones that get you, they get that about you. Do you yeah. think that's the key to unlocking Wilfred Zaha? Yeah, players ain't robots. Like, you've got feelings, you, like, bad games, good games. Your emotions change all the time, so having someone that's just going to ask you how you are now and then, I think makes a big difference, especially for me. And Wilfred Zaha has slammed the ball home. The club stayed in the Premier League. Yep. All's good, all's rosy, yeah. and then more change. This afternoon, Crystal Palace officially announced the Dutchman Frank de Boer as their new manager. Frank de Boer comes along with a very different yeah. strategy. Was it apparent straight away that he had very different ideas about how football yeah. should be played? Yeah, instantly, because obviously he wanted to make Palace into a team that had more possession. And obviously, some players ain't as confident on the ball as he would like. Mm -hmm. So... That didn't really help us at the time. It's a very tactful way of saying it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the only way I can put it. But, like, not everyone is as confident on, on the ball. Like, you know what you're good at. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it, headering. Some players are better than me at that. I'm good with the ball, some players ain't. So it's a thing where there wasn't really the right mixture for the way we wanted to play. At 70, Roy Hodgson becomes the oldest newly appointed manager in Premier League history. And then the pendulum swung back to a more Crystal Palace style, I guess, in yeah. terms of Roy Hodgson. He's a local lad as well, yeah. like yourself. Yeah, he is. I was surprised when he said he's from Croydon. I was thinking, really? But, yeah, he he's is. He's travelled the world a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, he then. speaks eight languages. Yeah. I thought, what? Have you spoken to him in French yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> like, I was speaking to Sacco, and he goes, oh, hey, don't speak about the manager. He speaks French. I was like, what? <laughs> he actually <laughs> speaks French. Delf. Oh, and it's five for Manchester City. Chance for Mata! Another heavy Crystal Palace defeat. Roy Hodgson's reaction says it all for Palace. And you're confident that despite this start, Palace no, will I'm, be... No, I'm, I'm very confident. We've got good enough players. It's just a thing where if you don't have confidence, you can't play like yourself. Soon enough, we'll go back to ourselves and we've got a good enough team, so I think we'll get out of this position. Why did you decide, ultimately, that you wanted to commit to the country of your birth? I had a lot of time to think it over because when I stopped playing for England, I had a four-year gap where I was not picked, no matter what I did. So I just thought, OK, fair enough, I'm obviously not good enough. Did you really believe that? No, I didn't. <laughs> but four years not being picked, no matter what you do... Did you have a phone call explaining why you weren't picked? Nothing at all. Like, and obviously, I've had four years no football, and Ivy Coast want me. They're promising I've got a spot in the team, mm. so why am I going to turn them down? Well, it goes back to being wanted, doesn't it? But yeah, and exactly. Feeling the, loved. Yeah, feeling loved. And the way they came, the way they approached me, the conversation we had is just like they really want me and they they see what I can bring to the team. It's been the right decision for you. Yeah, it's been, I feel like I, I made the right decision, definitely. You're a father now? Yeah, I'm, I'm a father. Um, son, one-year-old Leo. It has been hard, but I'm enjoying hard it. Hard birth, was it? Tough. No, no. <laughs> but it's just like the sleepless nights and it's just like... It's so hard, but I love him so much, so it's like I'll do anything for this little guy, like, so I've enjoyed it. Harder than you thought it was going to be? Yeah, way harder. You're never actually ever prepared, because you think you are, but then when the baby actually does come, there's just so much to it. But you know you have to do it, because he relies on you for everything, so... You're quite hands-on by the sounds of it. Yeah, I try, I try to do the most I can, like... I don't change his nappy as much as I should do, but everything else I try to do the most At I least, can. Wilf, you didn't say, I don't change his nappy. Oh, yeah. Because then we'd have had to have a little fight. Yeah. So <laughs> at least you do it sometimes. I do it is... when I can. If you go back to four-year-old Wilfred Zahar, who arrived from the Ivory Coast, and he saw 24-year-old, yeah. what would he think? Um, he'd think, why is this guy so serious? You perhaps don't always show the world the true you. Not really. I'm way more playful than people think I am. Because obviously on the pitch I'm focused, do you know what I mean? So people think, why is he so serious? Why does he never smile or whatever? But if you ask my brothers and my friends, I'm the most childish 
person ever, so yeah. If you actually get to know me, I'm actually a nice guy, a cheerful guy. It's Chelsea at home next for the Eagles, and boy, do they need him back for that one.